Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from BlenderRender.com and today I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try a live tutorial and we're going to be talking about command line rendering. It's basically rendering in the background and I want to know, definitely leave a comment if you if you like, if you think the uh, live stream thing is going to be good, <laughs> if you would prefer uh, live stream content. The biggest advantage for me is if I can do live stream tutorials, then I can probably put out like four times as much content, more tutorials, etc. The biggest downside is they might be longer and I might stumble through a few things because, you know, it's not going to be quite as polished and all that. Uh, but, you know, I can I can go back later and add bookmarks so you can quickly find stuff. So I think that it's going to be better for everyone if I can just do some live stream tutorials, uh, put out more content and, and that sort of thing. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to show you something first and then we'll talk about what I'm doing. So to open up command line, if you push the Windows tab and push uh, command, it'll open up command prompt here. And don't worry if this looks scary. It's, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm going to show you just right up front how to render an animation in the background. So if I type in, obviously if you have Blender installed already, all you have to do is type blender.exe space dash b for background. So dash b space. Then find the, the blend file you have. Drag it into here. And that will automatically copy the path. Okay, so, so blender.exe space dash b space path to your blend file dot blend space dash a. And now if I push enter, what it's going to do is it's going to open up a version of Blender in the background so you won't see it. And as you can see here, it's going to automatically start rendering out these frames. And this is all taken with this setting here it's taken from the blend file itself. So whatever your in and out point was, whatever your file format was, um, that's what it's gonna render out. So, and you can see here, it's still still going. Um, if you wanna quit out of this at any time, you can push Control C, Control C, and that quit, it stopped rendering um, early. I don't know what the last frame was supposed to be. Well, I can see right here. Last frame was supposed to be 100, it stopped at 92 because I pushed uh, Control C. And you can see here, if I push Control C again, it will uh, quit Blender. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the that's basically what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's uh, let's back up here. And again, don't worry about. I'm gonna show you a little bit more detail about the command line stuff here in a minute. So let's back up to why we're, why would you even want to render in the background? So uh, the reason I'm making this tutorial is a user named uh, Brandon emailed me and he said, Hey, you know, I'm having trouble with uh, an animation, I start rendering and then it just crashes. And a lot of users online have reported that even files that have crashed before, Blender files that have crashed before when rendering animation, if they render it in the background, it doesn't crash and it's a lot more stable. So that's really that's really where this tutorial came from. This is for Brandon, so he can, you know, he can test that out. Maybe that's going to solve his problem, maybe it won't. But uh, but you know, background rendering, there's a lot of use cases for for doing that. And you know, there's there's also some really interesting things you can do with uh, multiple computers and that sort of thing as well. But in general, if you render in the background, it's going to save memory and it should be more stable. So, all right, so let's go back and, and look at this again. So, and I've, I've got a few notes for, for myself here, but you can also Google render in the background. You can get a lot, you can do a lot of things through command line rendering. Uh, we're not going to go through all of it, but I'm going to go through some of the, the most useful ones, in my opinion. So, I'm going to go ahead and close this again. If I if I go down to start, it's another way to do it, and then search for command prompt. It'll open this up. If you're on Mac, you can do terminal, and I think it's basically the same thing. Um, in Linux, you do whatever a Linux user does. <laughs> uh, so again, uh, if you do Blender.exe, what this is going to do is run the Blender that's on that that is installed <clears throat> in your machine. So if you're like me and you have like 15 different versions of Blender you might want to use a different blender, right? So to do that, what you do is you push CD for change directory space. Then you go navigate to the, the blender file that you want, the blender exe you want. For me, um, the default for me is 2.92 is the default one, but I want to use 2.93. So I'm going to navigate to my exe file here. 
So again, CD space, CD space, and then drag this into there. And now push enter. Uh, directory name is invalid. CD. Hmm. Uh, oh, right. You need to go to the, the, the directory that's above this one. So it can't go to the Blender file. It has to go to the to the path above it. So this is another way you can get the path. So I could uh, go up and I could drag the folder into here. So that'll work. The other way you could do is CD. Oh yeah, CD, drag the folder into here. And now it's changed it to this uh, directory. I'm gonna close and do that one more time. CD, the other way you can get the, uh, the, the path is if you click up here on Explorer, if you, if you right click, you can do copy address and then you can do paste. That's another way you can do it. So CD space, the path to your new, where your new, there we go. Okay, so now we are in this directory. We're in this directory, so now what we do is we can push Blender, we don't have to push EXE. So Blender, dash B for background, find the blend file you want, drag it in, space, dash A for animation, and then if we want a start and end frame, say we don't want to do in this example, we we stopped at 92. We want to do 93 through 100, let's say. We can come over here and we can say dash S for start, space 93, so that'll be frame 93, space dash E for end, and then space 100. Now if we push enter, it's going to open 293. So you can see this is Blender 2.93. And it's starting to render and you can see it's just rendering those up oh, it's not rendering those frames I may have done something wrong here sorry guys let's see Okay, so I just had it mixed up. So dash A needs to be at the end. Dash A. So, so it's Blender, space, dash B, location of blend file, dash S, 40, starts at frame 40, space, dash E, 50, ends at 50, space, dash A for animation. All right, now let's look at rendering a single frame. This one I definitely know. <laughs> uh, so now we can do blender.exe dash B for background. Drag in our file here, space, dash F for frame, space. And then let's say we want to render frame 75. Enter. And we've ran, rendered 75. So yeah, and then I guess I can, uh, yeah, this is a, an amazing animation I have here. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see. There's one other thing I wanted to show you, which was the dot .bat file. So here's, this is uh, something I think is really cool. So if we go to, I don't want to use Word, let's use uh, Notepad. So if you have any text editor, if you wanted to save this command and use it later, you can do that. So if I push up in command prompt, I can get my last uh, my last command. And if I push it up again, I can cycle through all of these. So let's say we wanted to do this animation one. So if I copy all of this and paste it into a normal, you know, notepad, text editor, whatever, we have blender.ex. So this is, yeah. So let's say we wanted to change these frames from one to 150, okay? What you can do is you can push Control S for save. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this command line test, and then put dot bat dot bat. This is going to create a, a batch file. And now what you can do, go to my desktop here, 
You can see this is it right here. And now I can double click this file and it'll automatically run that for me. I don't have to open command prompt. I don't have to copy this or paste that. It'll just automatically run it. So you can see this, this can be really, really helpful depending on um, what you need to do. And it's, it's, you know, you can take this, I can copy this and I could create another one. I could call this, uh, so for instance, if you're like rendering on several different computers, different frames, um, you might want to do network rendering or cloud rendering, but let's just, for, for the sake of argument, let's just open this up, right click, edit, and you could say, okay, on, on this computer, I want to render frames 151 through uh, 200. And then you could save that. And then you could render, you could render that. So there's, there's a bunch of different use cases, but uh, you could see how these batch files can just help you, especially if you're not a coder, these can be really helpful to once you've fig figured out some background process you want to run uh, to save it as a batch file, because it's just, it's just easier to call it, call it up again. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to end this live stream now. Let me know what you think in the comments. Again, if you, if you think this uh, uh, live stream tutorials are, are a good idea, or if they're a terrible idea, if you, if you like to make fun of me as I stumble through this, or if, if I should uh, make them a little more succinct, but thanks for sticking with me. And yeah, before I sign off, I'll just, I'm just going to mention one more thing, which is again, the, it's going to check the settings that you have in your scene. So just for, for especially if you're sort of new to Blender, I want to make sure you understand this under this tab over here. In fact, I'll go to layout. This is the most common. Um, yeah, this is my animation. Just a uh, quick, quick explode. But the, under the, this tab over here, you have your, your scene settings, you have render, and then you have the scene. So scene is the second one. So it's going to take whatever settings you have here and render these. So it, you know, obviously you need to set your resolution. Uh, but this frame start and frame end, this is where if you don't specify it, it's going to take whatever you have here and render these frames. So whatever these are here, that's going to, that's going to render out. Um, and then this stuff is also sort of, inf you know, you have to have that stuff set up as well. And then output wherever you, you save your file, wherever you put this is where the frames are going to save. This is a, a, just another hack. If you want it to save in the same location of your blend file, all I have to do is push uh, two backslashes and then that will bring up wherever this file is saved. Otherwise you can just put this on your desktop or in a certain exports folder, whatever you want. Um, and then, yeah. And again, it's going to take these settings as well. So if you, if you wanted to be PNG, um, these, you set these settings here and then, you know, this is a, a, a pretty important one as well. If you want it to overwrite or not, um, a lot of times for me, I don't like it to overwrite, but it kind of depends on what you're doing. All right. That's it for, uh, for this tutorial. Uh, take care and I'll see you in the next video.